just took the level two Google Educator exam and it was not easy. Here are some important things that you should know. Hi, my name is John Silwash. I help teachers and students use Google products in the classroom. Every year I take the level one and level two Google Educator exam and summarize my experience in a video like this. Here are some important things that you need to know about the level two test for 2022. First off, the exam has changed. It is now comprised of 35 multiple choice and matching questions. I'll give you some examples here in just a minute. It is open book and open note. So you are welcome to research and confirm answers to questions along the way but you need to be aware that there is a three hour time limit. So you can't just go into this cold and, and plan on looking up everything because you'll run out of time. The exam fee is $25, which is a great deal. And your certification will last three years once you have earned it. Now here are some of the big updates for 2022. The biggest one is Google has eliminated the exam scenarios. If you talk with other teachers in your school and they're like, oh, watch out for the scenarios or watch old videos, those are all out of date. The exam is only multiple choice questions. I think the primary reason that Google has made the switch is to make it easier for them to update the exam. It was very difficult to update the scenarios every time a new product changed. Um, the multiple choice questions have been updated and they're much more accurate, which I think is a good thing. I'm a little disappointed. I did like the scenarios. I thought that was a, a very unique testing experience. Because it is now multiple choice, Google did go in and add lots of new questions. So past experience with the level two test is very different. There's new questions, a new balance of questions. There's a lot more on Google Drive, new products. Uh, Google has added questions on Jamboard and Google Keep, which was not previously included. So it's, it's a very different experience uh, when you take the level two test compared with uh, maybe the level one test that you may have taken a year ago. Um, they also relaxed the retesting rules. Uh, you must score 80% to pass the exam. If you do not pass the first time, and about 20% of people don't, um, you can take the exam a second time three days later, and you can take the exam a third time seven days after that, and you can even take it a fourth time um, in one calendar year if necessary. Rarely does anybody need to take the exam more than two times. Um, most people pass the second time if, uh, if ne necessary. Now, here's uh, an overview of the actual content or uh, the tools that are um, included on the level one, level two test. Now, over on the left side, these tools here are all included on the level one test and the level two test. So it used to be there was kind of a division. You had different tools for each one. There's a lot more overlap now. So if you're preparing for the level two test, you need to know about everything on level one and some noteworthy additions. I spent a lot of time in the Google space, but I'll be honest, I'm not really familiar with Google Trends, Google Scholar, um, Google Chat. My school doesn't use Google Chat, so it's just not something I deal with on a daily basis. If you're not familiar with those products, definitely spend some time exploring them and learning a little bit about them before uh, you jump in and start taking the level two uh, test. Now here are some sample questions. I'm not here to you know, actually tell you what's on the test. That would be um, inappropriate, but I have written my own questions in the style of what you can expect on the level two exam. Here's uh, an illustration. Um, you'll be asked to select all that apply. So these are much more challenging than just your standard multiple choice style questions, but there is a very helpful little clue. If you look up at the top of the question, Google will give you a hint. It will tell you how many correct choices there are. Now, I told you that you had to score 80% to pass, but we don't know how Google scores these questions. Do you get one point for each correct response, or do you have to get all the correct responses to get credit for this? We don't know. So it's very challenging, and because they've shrunk the length of the test, it used to have 50 plus questions, the margin for error is much smaller. So you don't have a lot of wiggle room and you, you need to go into this prepared um, and ready to go. Now, in addition to these select all that apply questions, you will receive some of these matching questions as well. Uh, where you know you need to drag, you're going to actually drag them in the order, um, you know, and match the correct Google tool and the class task or responsibility. 
Let's dive into some um, questions a little bit deeper and look at the actual exam content. Uh, I take the exam every year and I take very careful notes so that I can give you suggestions on how to prepare for um, this test. This is a, a very broad overview. So you can see I've divided all the questions into three categories. We have Google Drive, um, the um, communication tools like Gmail, Meet, and Calendar, and then the classroom tools like uh, Chrome, Search, YouTube, and Classroom. Now, the numbers aren't going to make sense because, you know, it's 35 questions. John, how'd you get 42 on Drive? Well, remember, each question may require me to select three or four, um, make three or four selections. So I would count that as four questions. So way more than 35 choices within the 35 questions that you are asked. So just from this summary, you can see that if you're going to, you know, study, <laughs> you want to spend your time over here on Google Drive. That's that's where you're going to get the greatest um, uh, advantages. Let's dive in a little bit closer. Um, you can pause the video um, and take this in. This is a comparison of the number of questions I've received on each Google product since I began keeping track back in 2017. The numbers are a little misleading because they changed the format so much. Um, but I just want to highlight a couple of noteworthy things. We can see a massive increase in the number of questions on Google Drive related things. It used to be that like slides, Google Classroom, um, Google Sheets were kind of relegated to the level one test. That's no longer the case. I mean, I went from no questions on Google Slides to six. Um, no questions on Classroom, and I did get one uh, this year. Another one uh, I didn't highlight, but it's worth uh, noting, I did not get any questions on Google Sheets on the level one test, but I got nine on the level two test. So Google is shifting the emphasis around between the level one and level two tests just means you need to be prepared. You got to know about this. And then as I mentioned, they've included uh, Jamboard and Google Keep, which I think uh, makes sense, so good, uh, good additions there. There was a point on the level two test when I took it where I was like, man, this is tough. I, I hope I can, I hope I pass. It was a little concerning there for a bit, but I did, I did make it. Um, here's a, a comparison of the time that it takes me to complete the level two test. Um, and you can see you know, that the, the time it takes has just drastically been going down. And I think this is probably good. Time really isn't a factor anymore. Running out of time used to be one of the biggest challenges in the old format. You got plenty of time. You can look things up. You can confirm answers. Um, that, that shouldn't be a big uh, challenge for you. Now, if you're interested in um, learning more about the level two test, um, I'd encourage you to grab my free study guide for the level two exam. I have a checklist of the skills that you should master before you take the level two test. I've got some sample questions that are similar to the style that you'll see on the exam as well. So head over to geducator.com right on the homepage. You'll see the uh, button where you can download this and uh, hopefully it'll help you prepare for your upcoming exam. A couple of tips uh, for you. First of all, study up. Like I mentioned, this is not easy. The level two test definitely goes deeper into the Google products. It doesn't just go surface level. Uh, if you're familiar with the Google products, that's great. You're taking level two. This is not just general stuff. You, you really need to know some of the advanced features of Sheets and Slides and Google Meet and Google Classroom. So be prepared especially those um, other tools we mentioned, Google Scholar, Google Trends, things you may not be as familiar with. Uh, spend some time checking those out. There was a lot of questions on Google Search. I mean, Google really wants to make sure that you're comfortable with some of their core products, which are search related. So that's, uh, that's a big one. Another thing to be aware of is, um, on the level two test, Google will go start to dip into some of the third party tools. So make sure you understand add-ons, extensions, and the difference between them. You don't need to know about any specific one. Google's not gonna ask you about some random tool you've never heard of, but you need to know where to get them, how to find them, how to use them, how to uninstall them, uh, things like that, both for extensions and add-ons. Those are a couple of my top tips. Um, I did include some additional tips and test taking strategies in my level one overview video. You can check that out by clicking up here. And again, I'd encourage you to download the study guide for level two. Hopefully that'll help you prepare. You can click the link down below and check that out.